Hello, I am Sandhya Devi, going to discuss the second part of discussion on embedded system hardware components. So topics to be discussed are power supply, oscillator circuit, ports and interrupt control. For this particular topic, I have referred Embedded Systems, Architecture, Programming and Design by author Raj Kamal. The last lecture session, we discussed topics on processor, timers, reset circuitry and memory. Whereas right now I will be discussing on power supply, oscillatory circuit, input devices, output devices and ports. Power supply this is one important and mandatory component because without electric power nothing happens. So most systems have their own power source where well, certain system like network interface card will not have its own power source. In such a case, external supply is used. In this case, it's from PC power lines. The voltage ranges are listed here, which you can see it on the screen. And in most of the systems, 5 volt system processor and units will be used in order to get the best performance because power supply has got Relations between relation with propagation delay. So, in order to get the best performance, five old system processor and units is usually used. Oscillator circuits. So, oscillator circuits ensures the harmonic and synchronous operation of almost all the circuits within the control. It is used to control the time of execution of an instruction. It is used to control CPU machine cycles. That is, fetching phase will take its own time. Decoding is very important. Execution phase is also important. And once executed, the time taken to store the result is also important. So an oscillator circuit is mandatory and any system should have a system. In order to get the best speed of execution, merely increasing the clock frequency alone will not give you the output, expected output, because if we are increasing the clock frequency after a certain point or threshold level, then the system becomes unstable, whereas a highly stable oscillator circuit is alone required for an embedded system. Ports. As we know, we have input ports, output ports, and bidirectional ports, IO ports also. So, we know the inputs from EPO add, sensor, and transistors, everything is sent through an input port, and the output bytes will be sent through an output port to an LED monitor or an LCD monitor or, a, or it can be alarms, etc. So if it is an input port, a read operation on the inputs will be done and if it is an output port, a write operation is done. If it is a general purpose port which can perform both input and output, which can act as both input and output port, then both read or write operation can be The display panel on the smartphone is one 
put example which shows input read output write operation apart from IO ports ports can be either perform serial communication or parallel communication in case of serial communication one single data line will be used on which stream of bits will be sent processed sent will be sent as input will be processed and then it will be sent to the output channel serial in case of parallel ports multiple data lines will be available where one bit will be transmitted on each of these lines the port which we use to connect printer and monitor our example for parallel ports so the basic underlying component on which all these kind of communication is happening is on the communication bus the bus is nothing but set of electrical lines carrying ones and zeros and how the communication is happening on the bus is given by communication protocol for example can is one protocol communication protocol i2c is one communication protocol spi is one communication protocol where each protocol explains the rules and regulation on how the communication must happen on the bus Finally, in any real-time embedded system, the role of interrupt is very important. It is a condition which causes the microprocessor to temporarily work on some other task, leaving the currently working task. And after completing the temporary task, it will return back to the previous task. So the source of interrupt can be internal or external. If it is internal, then it may be caused, it can be caused by a timer overflow or by the on-chip modules in order to seek the attention of the processor. Whereas if it is external, it is from some real world entities. Hardware signal is used to indicate the occurrence of event in some cases, whereas software interrupts are also available if suppose if an exceptional condition is executed, for example divided by zero. If more than one interrupt source is available on a system, then definitely prioritizing the interrupt sources will be well and good. So while assigning the priority, the non-maskable interrupt sources will be given the highest priority because you cannot make a non-maskable interrupt source to wait for the attention for getting the attention of the CPU. No, you cannot. Immediately the CPU has to pay attention to non-maskable interrupt sources which will be usually raised by the kernels. So maskable interrupts are the interrupt sources which you can temporarily you can deactivate or keep it in the waiting state or in the system. Though we know system always gives priority to interrupts and our execution of ISRs over the task of an application. The priority also plays a major role in system design. Thus, a rough outline on the basic hardware components of embedded system has been covered in part 1 and part 2 video sessions. Thank you.